Well, here we have the packet that you received. And um, I want to just, we're only going to do one of the things today, but I just want to point out something to you. Um, on this supply list, it has all of the uh, um, all of the things that you need in order to do the projects for the class. Um, I just want you to know, I, I wrote something for you right here. Bring back any of the tools, the scraps of fabric, or any of the unused supplies. Put them back into this bag at the end of the course and drop them off with me. So I can meet you if I haven't gotten to see you in person this semester. Um, maybe we will meet by the end of the semester. I'm not real sure right now. But um, next semester, bring them back to my room, E102. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to actually meeting you in person sometime. So uh, here's the supply list. Now for today, the only thing that I want you to do is reach into the bottom of this packet and you'll see an orange folder. I want you to pull out the orange folder. Okay, this is what we're gonna need. We're gonna have a lesson all about weaves. So I'm gonna put my bag away and um, what you're gonna need for this is a pair of scissors and a roll of tape, okay? Um, so let's open this up and first take a look and see what we've got here. So I've written up this sheet, it's Fabric Construction Techniques. This is what we do in class usually and we have some actual fabrics that you get to see and I give you a little magnifying glass and you can look and see the weaves, but I can explain it to you and you'll get the idea. So there's only five different ways that fabrics are created. One way is with a plain weave. So examples of a plain weave, and you should write this down right here, would be, um, well, men's shirts and boxer shorts. Um, something that isn't a garment would be a tennis racket. There's also screens for windows, so window screens. You can picture the idea because all of these are called plain weaves. It looks like almost like a checkerboard. Now, are they stretchy? No, none of them are stretchy, okay? Now, the next one is called a twill weave. A twill weave is the strongest weave that there is. It runs um, two over, two under, two over, two under, and it's staggered so that as the weave happens, it looks like a diagonal. You can see the, um, the weave as a diagonal. And this would be a good example, would be anything that's denim, that's made out of a twill weave, which would mean jeans, jean jackets, so on and so forth. Um, also, things that are really need to be strong, like parachutes, Um, tents and other things where you need the strength that's called a twill weave um, the last one the last kind of weave is called a satin weave and a satin weave is when you go over four under one over four under one and again each time you do a row it's going to be staggered so you can see a diagonal but because you're going over four at a time it's going to be called these are called floats so floats make the fabric really very um, fragile. It tends to get snagged a lot and um, it's not a real strong weave. So some examples of this might be a blouse. It could be a man's necktie. It might be a nightgown. Things that have a smooth hand, it's called. So when you your hand glides over it, it means that it um, has a lot of what they call the floats. Um, maybe tablecloths might be you might be made out of a satin weave. So those things. Now, is that stretchy? No, and twill is not stretchy either. Okay, now. Over here, these are called, this is called a non-woven. So an example of a non-woven is the felt that you see in your bag. 
Those are non-wovens because what happens is they take all the fibers and they mix them with a solution and they compress them as tight as possible. And from this compression, they stay together. And this is how they make various things. So one kind of fabric that's made is called felt. But there are other things in your house that you use all the time that are made from non-wovens, such as this paper that we're writing on, okay? Um, facial tissues, Kleenex, paper towels, and also dryer sheets. All of those you may, if you think about them, you're going to realize that the, that the fibers are all sort of just mixed up. And that's what a non-wove it's all about. Now the last thing is, oh, and these are definitely not stretchy. A knit, on the other hand, is the only kind of construction technique that it is stretchy. So yes, now some examples of a knit would be a hoodie, a sweater, socks, leggings, t-shirts, and anything else that you can think of that needs to stretch. Okay, so every single thing that you see that's fabric is made up of one of these five techniques. Sometimes the fabrics are really fancy. They might have a design within them. And in that case, it's a combination of maybe two or all three of these different kinds of weaves. So what I'm going to show you today and what you're going to do, this little project that I have for you, is you're going to actually create examples of the three different kinds of wovens. So I've given you some papers. This one right here it has, these are called weft yarns. So on a loom, the yarns that go across are called the weft yarns. I've given you three papers that say weft yarns on them. And they're three different colors. Then I've given you three different papers that say warp yarns. So the warp yarns go lengthwise on the loom. Okay, so I've got this one, I've got this one, and I've got this one for you. So you may have these colors, maybe you have some different colors. I have lots of different colors of paper. So, um, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna learn how to assemble it to make a plain weave. So you're gonna need your scissors and you're gonna start cutting. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is cut on the lines, but you don't wanna cut all the way through. So I'm gonna start at this end where the line is really close. I couldn't get the line any closer to the end because of the margins of the paper that I was that I was typing out. But I want you to go ahead and cut them all apart. Now, I've seen students that they thought that they could take a shortcut and they layered all three of these papers together and they proceeded to cut. But it didn't go very well because the paper slipped as they were cutting and then they didn't get a very, they didn't do a very good job with it. So just cut right on the lines and when you get up to here, stop. This line right here, I want you to cut this completely off. Okay, you just made yourself a bookmark. All right, so now I've got this one ready to go. I'm gonna remove my other two warp yarn ones so we don't get confused. And I'm gonna pick one of these. I think I'm gonna pick this pink one to go with it. I'll remove my other weft yarns. And now I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut this off. Here's another bookmark. You see, I don't waste anything. And I'm gonna cut all of the lines. So I've got sort of like fringe. And I'm gonna show you how to interlace them together so you get a plain weave. Like I told you before, it kinda of looks like a checkerboard. So you could call it a checkerboard, but I want you to label it as a plain weave. So I'll be cutting it apart. Oops, I didn't get to the end. Make sure you do. I'm gonna cut it all the way to the end of the line. And, I, and, and there's something that I wanna to explain to you because I realized when I started to teach that I realized that some students don't know how to hold scissors. 
and I, I don't know that it applies to you or not, but I wanna make sure you understand that scissors look like this for a reason. This opening is smaller than this opening. So the smaller opening is for your thumb, and the larger opening is for either two or three fingers to go in there. And a cutting motion is not just opening and closing because you won't have any control. You've gotta always be pushing or pushing towards you or pushing to the right with my thumb and I'm pushing away with my other fingers to the left and that causes the friction that you need in order to make a clean cut. If you're just gonna smack this open and close, you're not gonna be able to cut. And when we do paper, that's easy. But I've seen students really struggle with cutting the felt. The felt's a little bit harder to cut, and if you don't get the hang of this with the pushing and the pulling, you won't have a very easy time with the felt. So I'm just sort of warning you with it. Okay, now, it's, I made it so that you could understand this easier, and there's four sides to this orange folder, okay? So I'm gonna write on this fabric, construction, techniques. And these are the wovens. Okay, and when I open it up, I'm gonna give me, I'm gonna do an example of a plain weave. And I want you to label these like this too. I want you to This right here was gonna be the twill weave. And on the back, you're gonna put your example of satin weave. Okay? All right, so let's start the plain weave. The plain weave is, you're gonna be taping along the side. See, it says tape down the side. So I'm gonna put this as low as I can go and I need to have a little tiny bit of the orange folder showing so I can tape it down. And I've already pre-cut some pieces of tape, so I'm just gonna go like this with it, okay? I wanna make sure that it's, it's down low enough and it's taped just along the side. Then across the top, I'm gonna take my warp yarns, which are the long yarns, and I'm gonna situate it so that the end of the cut is just a little bit, a little tiny bit above where my um, weft yarns are. And I'm gonna lay it right down here. So I've covered up the pink paper with the yellow, and now I'm gonna tape it right across the top. Uh-oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure again that I'm I'm raising this high enough so that the top of my warp yarns, the cut is going to be higher than where that pink sheet of paper is. All right. So now, in order to do this, the easiest way to do this, and believe me, we've tried all different ways in my class, but we found this is the easiest way to do it. I'm going to take my my weft yarns. I'm going to take this paper and I'm gonna fold it right back, like, th like this, okay? I'm gonna fold it back. And then I'm gonna take, and these uh, warp yarns, just like a loom, I'm gonna lift up every other one, including this, which I'm gonna call the frame. I'm gonna lift up every other one, and now I'm gonna lower my top weft yarn, okay? Once I do that, I'm gonna lift up the opposite ones. So I want it to go under, over, under, over, under, over. And now I want it to go over, under, over, under, over, under. So I'm gonna lift up every other one. All the way up, I'm gonna lay down the next yarn. And I want to bring it all the way up as high as I can, and I'm going to bury that end one in the underneath the frame. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'll keep going, and you can watch as this works, as I work.
there we have it. So I'm going to now take my tape and I want to tape down the frame so that none of these yarns get away. Oh, it seems like I got a piece of thing attached to that. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's the plain weave.